Ice is the perfect destructive drug. It's easy to make, highly addictive, and it's everywhere. Now the Prime Minister has commissioned a new task force to tackle this national crisis. Because you don't need to touch ice to be its victim. It's intersecting with every aspect of Australian life. Destroying families, causing carnage on our roads and murder in our homes. And the problem is not confined to our cities. Ice is ripping through rural and regional areas, devastating entire towns. Tonight, we meet the innocent victims of ice and measure the true toll of a crisis, the likes of which Australia has never seen. I actually give up as a mother. And I never thought I would do that. I feel like I've hung in there for years and years and I just can't do it anymore. <laughs> Are you saying you wanted her out of your life? I did. Susan Annesley is a mother at breaking point. Her daughter, Britt, is 31, a mother herself to three young children and an ice addict. Your mum said she almost wished that you had died because she thought it was the only way you'd find peace. <laughs> yeah. This is a family torn apart by ice. Britt's life is in ruins. Her siblings won't speak to her, while Susan has been forced to quit her job as a public servant to care full time for Brit's three kids. Should be enjoying life. Yeah, well, just, just see those little kids safe and see a smile on their faces. It's enough for us at the moment. We can put our lives on hold. In your <laughs> darkest days, were you aware of what your addiction was doing to your family? <sighs> yeah. Did you care? Yeah. But I couldn't stop. No. Right now, Australia's in the clutches of the worst drug crisis we've ever seen. Ice has swept across the country, from capital cities to small country towns. And here, in regional Victoria, it's rampant. This is Bacchus Marsh, 50 kilometres northwest of Melbourne. It's the kind of place where everyone knows their neighbours and everyone knows someone who's on ice. How big of a problem is ice here in Bacchus Marsh? It's huge. Absolutely huge. It's destroying the community. And our children and loved ones are killing themselves and others because of it. And there's nothing being done. Everyone's just watching the carnage. Get off! Are you gonna cry? No. <laughs> Whether it be Bacchus Marsh or whether it be some other city or regional town, uh, it's presenting a problem everywhere. This is such a scourge on the nation. This is the most risky and dangerous of all illegal drugs that are out there. We put it right at the top as the most harmful illegal drug that Australia is facing. Chris Dawson runs the Australian Crime Commission, which has just released the most comprehensive report on ice in our community. I mean, it's frightening when you think that ice use has almost doubled in the past 12 months. The prevalence of daily, weekly use is 
getting very, very high. Over 1.3 million people have said we've tried it at some point in time in their life. So those figures are very alarming. Britt Hallett first tried ice at a party six years ago. Like most addicts, she thought she could control it. She couldn't. I was in denial for so long about my drug use and hiding it and lived such an isolated life from it. When I first meet Britt, she's been clean for 27 days. No mean feat for someone who's been addicted for six years. And for much of that time, if Britt wasn't erupting in a fit of rage, she was comatose in bed. Britt wasn't only destroying her own life, she was putting her three children, aged two, three and seven, in serious danger. I knew I was doing the wrong thing, but I didn't understand why I was in bed laying there, like I just couldn't move. So you're in that state when your three little kids are at home? Mm. And you're mm. meant to be their mum looking after them. Mm -hmm. That must have been so frightening for them, seeing you like that. Mm. Yeah. So it just got worse and worse from there. Her son used to get really frightened when mum would be really angry and she'd pull a knife out of the drawer and he didn't know what she was going to do with it. And he would get up and make his little sister's breakfast. And it, it absolutely killed me as their grandparent happened to listen to that. <laughs> but ice hasn't only ravaged Susan's immediate family. Just going past what's known as Drago Court. Down here on the left? Yes. And everyone knows that's where you can go to buy ice. Yes, it's a big problem. Julie is Susan's sister, Britt's aunt. She has a son addicted to ice and has spent countless nights driving the streets of Bacchus Marsh looking for him. Coming up here on the left, um, I've pulled my son out of a house many a times in my pyjamas at night. That's incredibly dangerous no. of you to be busting in doors in the middle of the night. These are drug houses. Yeah, I suppose, but no, not for my kids. I'd run, out, run over broken glass to protect them. For Susan, she knew she couldn't save her daughter, but she could rescue her grandchildren. So at age 52, she gave up her career and along with her partner, David, took in Brit's kids. Mum had given up on me and she could only take care of my kids. <laughs> and she's just, she said, I can't help you anymore. And you need to help yourself, but I didn't know how to help myself. Was that the hardest decision you've ever had to make, to choose between your daughter and your grandkids? Yeah. It was absolutely heartbreaking because she's their mum. And I know that she loves them. I didn't want to take her children away from her, but they couldn't be left with her. Coming up, busting the backyard cooks. We are finding a drug lab on oh, nearly a daily basis. Police fight back. This is such a scourge on the nation. And victims who never stood a chance. The collision was so violent, he was thrown 52 metres. Why our house? Why is Aiden? <laughs> My son was murdered so he could get a hit of ice. That's next on 60 Minutes. Queensland Police raiding an ice lab. It's a scene playing out across Australia 
from the suburbs to regional towns. Where is he? There, there, there. And what's seized ends up in evidence rooms like this. It's quite a confronting visual, this room. I can't believe these are all drug labs. Yes, they are. Each represents a, a drug lab that we've taken off the streets. When it comes to drug labs, these are the exhibits that can kill you. Detective Senior Sergeant Jeff Marsh from Queensland's Drug Squad says almost anyone can make ice. The labs his team is finding are small, mobile and easily hidden. In a bathroom, even the boot of a car. This is the most basic backyard operation that we find. We actually call them in Queensland box labs because you can basically get the entire equipment, apparatus and chemicals into a box. How many labs are you uncovering? We are finding a drug lab on nearly a daily basis throughout Queensland. Backyard cooks aren't even the biggest problem. Crime Commission boss Chris Dawson says it's the global drug cartels that are responsible for the bulk of the ice that's flooding Australia. They're the lowest of the low. Uh, they will be there for absolute greed and absolute profit. They don't care, of course, to the harm that comes from this. Uh, and we're talking people dying. Are we losing the fight against this drug? Well, I think it's an enduring fight that we have to continue on. Um, I We're not winning it though, are we? Well, presently the trends are going north. With more and more people using ice, the risks to everyone are obvious. The drug's violent consequences can strike anywhere and anyone. My son was murdered so he could get a hit of ice. That's it. <laughs> Casey Veal's 10-month-old son Zayden was brutally murdered by an ice addict during a random burglary. The first Casey knew anything was wrong was when she woke to find they'd been robbed. When I walked over to the cot and I've pulled the blankets back, that's when I've seen his face and there was blood everywhere underneath him. Zayden had been repeatedly bashed, then stabbed 32 times with a homemade copper baton. He was rushed to hospital, but Zayden could not be saved. He was gone. He was gone, so I just, I just asked him if I could have him. I just wanted to hold him. I didn't want him to be alone in this huge bed by himself with all these tubes. I just sat and I cried and I said to him, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, like I failed. That was my only job, was your mum was to look after you and I did it. Weeks later, police arrested 21-year-old Harley Hicks. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Puts it all into circles, smack yeah. bang. Yeah, I understand that. A known yeah. ice addict in the Bendigo area of central Victoria. I had nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. He is currently serving a life sentence. Harley Hicks was responsible for all of his actions that night. He is the one that killed Zayden. But do you think ice played a part? I think that that encouraged his rage. And he took that rage out on my infant son. Could have been anyone's home, anyone's child. And it, it tortures us because it's always like something that's, why me? Why our house? Why Zayden? As horrific and tragic as Casey's loss is, it's the randomness that is most frightening. Whether you're at home or on the roads, you never know where ice could strike. What happened at this intersection last year is a terrifying example of ice colliding head-on with the community. 
In January 2014, 29-year-old Nailima da Costa decided to drive his car through Melbourne while high on ice. It was a decision that would change the lives of three families forever. Despite the lights being red, da Costa came screaming through this intersection at 120 kilometres an hour, hitting pedestrian Tony Parsons as he crossed the road. The collision was so violent, he was thrown 52 metres, landing about here. His wife Sue, who'd been walking right alongside him, could only watch on in horror. Da Costa then slammed side on into a car, carrying five members of the one family. They were returning home from a wedding. Savas Manalau and his wife of 38 years, Ismini, died at the scene. Tony Parsons, the pedestrian, was killed on impact. Nailima da Costa, the ice addict, survived and was jailed for 16 years. It's the sort of story that's disturbingly common. Britt Hallett was high on ice when she got behind the wheel in 2011. Do you think about that accident much? Yeah, for a long time I was reliving it daily and tr just having panic attacks and... You could have killed that I man. I could have, mm. Britt ploughed into a car driven by an off-duty police officer. Mum Susan believes only luck saw them both survive. She was lying in a brace, couldn't move, her face was black and blue, she had tubes coming out of her. We were absolutely beside ourselves. That crash should have been a wake-up call, but it's only now that Brit is ready to beat her addiction. She's lost everything that's important to her. While Susan and her long-term partner, David, are burdened with raising Brit's three kids. We think we've probably got these little kids for a very long time, yeah? What does our retirement mean? It maybe it means going back to work and working harder just to survive. Has it put a strain on your relationship? It has, it has. David's a wonderful person and um, he could have walked out many of times. <laughs> but he loves those kids and he loves me and I really don't know how he's hung in there. We just feel like we've been left on our own. One family in one small town, enduring a sadly familiar ordeal. But after years of pain, the focus now is solely on the future. Britt is in three months of rehab, determined to be a mother to her three children, finally free from the clutches of ice. You do have a lot of work ahead of you. I do, I do. It's not gonna be smooth sailing, there's, yeah, like, yeah. Um, but I'm aware of that and I'm ready for it. Do you think she can do it? I come from a really, really strong family. We, we have not got give up in us. And I just hope that Brit has got that in her to keep fighting and for those beautiful little kids to do it for them because they're just gorgeous. They deserve their mum back. I want to be someone they can be proud of and someone that they can rely on and they got mum to support them and, you know. Yeah, 
minutes only because I'm ready and I want it now. I'm just so grateful that I get it now. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.